Welcome to Confessions from a Pastor's Wife. Thank you for joining me. If you like the content of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also get this on Apple and Spotify podcasts. Well, I am back. <laughs> Sorry for the uh, delay between videos here. A little bit going on with my life, so I'm going to give you a bit of an update, um, and then I'm going to get into what I feel God has placed on my heart to discuss with you today. So um, the last I left you, I don't believe I was 40 yet. I turned 40, had a beautiful birthday. Um, and then we also celebrated the arrival of our first grandchild. So my husband's um, firstborn daughter who got married last year, her and her husband had a baby boy. So we've just been obsessed with him and loving on him and spending as much time with him as we can. And you know, just kind of little life things getting in the way, but I feel that that's okay. I think that you guys understand. And I think that, um, I think that your support, I mean, has been great. So it, it and your encouragements, if you're, um, seeing me at church on Sundays, it's been great. And even online, I really appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, so that's, what's been going on. And then I am going to ask you for a little prayer. Well, I guess not a little prayer, but a prayer request from myself. Uh, for my oldest son. So in my prior podcast, you know that um, my son no longer lives with me and he's going to be turning 19 and, you know, just a lot of life things has happened um, for him. And I, I, at this point, as a parent, you've got to learn when to take the back seat. And that's what I'm doing at this time. You know, I, I will still be there for him whenever he asks me to. I mean, there's been a few medical emergencies I've been there for him through and, you know, trying to get him back on track. And, you know, at this point, it just has to be his decision and I have to leave it in his hands, which is really hard for, you know, he's my firstborn. And um, I just ask for your prayer for him to gain clarity, focus um, and drive to finish what it is that he needs to do um, through high school and, uh, you know, set himself up on the path of success uh, for his future. You know, he's going to be turning 19 in September, so definitely not too late for him by any means. I mean, it's never too late. You're never too old to restart. I just, I believe that he lacks the focus and he's not surrounding himself with people that are challenging him to focus. So I just ask for your prayer in that. And uh, for me as well, as his mom, you know, this week was really tough. I almost had a breakdown because, again, you just think of this beautiful baby boy that, you know, 19 years ago, you had him at 21 and you just thought you're like, you didn't expect your life that, or his life to turn out this way. Right. So and you constantly think to yourself, is there anything I could have done differently? Maybe I should have been a better mom and all these things. And at the end of the day, you know, this is his life. It's his choices. And I've come to the realization that this could all be part of his testimony. And I don't want to interfere with that. God has a plan for him. And I know that. And I just need to be okay with letting him go and letting God work on him and having him come to the realization in his own time. So I know he's going to have one heck of a testimony. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> so your prayers would be appreciated for that. So into the episode, <laughs> I want to talk to you today about peace. That's another word I was given the beginning of the year. It was truth. I had a prophetic word, which is amazing to get um, about truth and everything that's been going on throughout the year. I was also given one about peace, and I thought it meant like a peaceful time in the world. But I think what God was trying to tell me was through the midst of the truth, there's going to be a lot of chaos this year. So make sure you protect your peace. And so there's a lot going on in the world where it's trying to steal your peace. You've got the Israel conflict. You've got the Western world reacting to that conflict. You have misinformation all over the internet and social media about what's going on with that conflict, about what groups are involved in this conflict. If it's genocide, if it's not, like it's all, there's a bunch of stuff going on. And for me, I... I'm always going to side with God's people. You know, it says in the Bible that you're not supposed to speak against God's people. 
Um, he made a promise to them, you know, God is a faithful God and he keeps his promise. He made a nation out of one man and he told him that like that that's what he would produce out of him, out of one line, one, one man. Um, and he's constantly protecting them, shielding them. So I know that they're going to make it through this conflict. Um, it's just really sad to see. It's sad to see the protests. I mean, I had one in my own town in um, Ontario, which was kind of, it wasn't big or anything, but it was a little bit shocking. And then, you know, um, Ottawa, they had a big march and everything. And it just, for me, when I am living in Canada, where we believe in freedom and people are chanting that it was a great October 7th, that to me, it just, like, it just makes me sad. It makes me upset really gets me going <laughs> and you know and even some of the protests that I see at universities around Ontario and then in the states especially Jews not being allowed to attend the facility that they've paid to be at being called names you know it's it's all it's like you might as well just bring Hitler back like it, it it's all re the reminiscent you know and and it's heartbreaking how can you be like that to a group of people and especially in the states like they are Jewish people, yes, but they're not in Israel right now. They're not partaking, like they're not a part of this. I, I just think it's a little bit ridiculous when we react and start to chastise Americans who happen to be Jewish. Like it's it's a little bit ridiculous. So anyways, the, all of that has been affecting my peace. And um, so there's other things too, you know, we just went through June and there's more events coming in my hometown. So, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of in your face and we've got, um, you know, biological men who are claiming to be females invading our spaces. So there's like, this whole world is gone topsy turvy, like things that are wrong are viewed as right. Things that are right are viewed as wrong. Um, and then the biggest thing that's really been affecting my peace is hearing people speak poorly about my Jesus, make fun of the Last Supper, and then say, no, we were depicting something else when we know exactly what you were doing. Artists, musicians, claiming that it's just art and an expression of themselves when it's full-on mockery. And I don't know why we as Christians are expected to just sit down and take it. Maybe it's because throughout the years, Christianity has done its fair share of oppression. But at this point, like, it's really in your, in your face. The sa like, Satan is no longer hiding. And it's, it's miraculous to me that people don't recognize it. But at the same time, if you're not a believer, you're not going to recognize it. They're not going to have discernment because that's a gift that you get from the Holy Spirit. You know, their eyes are not open. They're sleeping. So it that's been really affecting my peace as well. So I was looking for some scriptures yesterday and I opened up my Bible and it opened to John. And I knew the scripture that I was looking for was in John, uh, the book of John. And um, I knew it was in the book of John chapter 15. Sorry, you're going to hear my dogs. <laughs> Um, but what was funny was I opened up my Bible and it was the beginning of chapter 15, but above it was a paragraph from chapter 14 and that's where my eyes went. So I started to read it and it said to me, <laughs> so John chapter 14, verse 27, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you, I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really loved me, you would be happy that I am going to the Father who is greater than I am. I had told you these things before they happen so that when they do happen, you will believe. So that right there was a sign to me, God speaking to me saying, this is a gift. Peace isn't just something that you experience. It is a gift given to us by him. He left us with this beautiful gift of peace and knowing that these things need to happen. He warned us so that when they do occur, we won't be shocked and it won't shake our peace. 
So now I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm letting the world take away my peace. This beautiful gift that Jesus has given me, this gift that he fought for, that he died on the cross for, that he won the battle against death and rose again, you know, and I just, I am, I just have been apologizing to him for letting the world try to take my peace. And that is what the world does. The world wants to steal that peace from you. Satan wants to steal that peace from you. So we have to do everything that we can, no matter what is going on in the world, to protect that peace. I often now am thinking of Jesus when he's in the boat crossing the sea and it's raging and blowing and waves are going crazy and the disciples are freaking out. But Jesus is taking a nap. He is the peace and the calm in the midst of a storm. Right now, there is a wicked storm going on. And there's thrashing and there's water everywhere. And you think you might just drown in it. And you just don't know if you're going to make it there. No, you can't think like that. You got to be the peace. Yes, I know what's going on around me, but it's not going to shake me. And I think that that's something that we need to take further into the year. Because something is happening and something is going to come down the pipe. I really feel it. I've been speaking to my husband about it. He feels it. There's other Christians that feel it. We're seeing a lot of things coming true right now. Like we are truly watching the book of Revelation play out. You know, the mockery, the, like I said, everything that's wrong is great and everything that's right is bad. So um, you just can't allow it to affect your peace. So, you know, if you're looking at social media and it's trying to steal your peace, don't look at it anymore. Don't look in the comment sections anymore. And I think the bigger thing too is don't react. That's what they want. I was going through TikTok, um, what was it, a couple days ago, and I found a video of this woman talking about how she used to be an atheist. And her goal every single day was to troll, like internet troll, leave mean comments to Christians to get them to react. And when they reacted, she was like, ha ha, I stole your piece. She flat out said it. So what she did say, though, was the thing that made her run away as an atheist when she would fling this crap at a Christian is if the Christian responded with love, with patience, with grace, with mercy, the way Jesus would. She ran. She never talked to them again. But that planted a seed, she said. And eventually she was curious as to how can I be so mean on the Internet and not get the response that I wanted? They didn't react to me. How is it that they're able to still speak to me out of love? What is this all about? And that seed grew, and now she is a Christian. And that is amazing. So as much as I want to react to people making fun of my Jesus, because I know what it is to live a life without him, and I never want to go back to that. I never want to feel that emptiness, that void, that loneliness ever again. It's hard for me not to react, but I know that it's not going to bring them to Jesus. We are his ambassadors. We are to be a light in the darkness, and this world is getting ever so dark. But we need to respond with patience and love and mercy. As frustrating as that is. (laughs) All right. So, And then another verse that I was actually looking for was in John chapter 15. And that one, just, you know, if you're finding that you're being attacked... This is the warning Jesus gave about the world. This is John chapter 15, verse 18. If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. The world would love you as one of its own if you belong to it, but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world, so it hates you. It wants to steal your peace and it hates you because it hated Jesus first. That is such an honor. He took us out of the world. All we had to do was believe in him, accept him into our hearts. And, and that's it. You know, like that, it's so easy 
It's almost too easy, I know. But and, and so that's what the world is doing right now. It is hating on Christianity. And there's so many reactions that, they're, that re- Christians are giving that it's, it's not helpful. It's not going to bring anyone to the kingdom and it's going to do more damage. And I know I've said this before in another podcast, but I just really want to hit it home because even for myself, I'm talking to myself as well. Like there's comments that, you know, I would love to leave, but it's just not going to do anything. And it's going to further damage like, oh yeah, there's that Christian being, they call us hypocrites and bigots and stuff, stuff like that. And hates speech and all that thing. Like you're not going to change their minds. That's just how they are. You can plant seeds and water it and you know, hopefully something comes around, but really Jesus is the only thing that's going to transform somebody. Bringing them to church, introducing to Jesus, them to Jesus, if they're interested in it, that's great. But at the end of the day, it's a personal relationship between that person and Jesus. And if they want that personal relationship, they're the ones that need to do it. You know, so I also want to caution you because I do see that there's some pastors that are falling. And I think it's because we weren't given, we weren't asking, sorry, we weren't asking for enough discernment before we started following um, certain people, making sure that they were put there, they were divinely appointed, that they have the anointing. So I encourage you to ask for discernment with, you know, whoever's speaking into your life to make sure that where they're coming from is true. You know, the reason that I speak on this is because I was watching a documentary with my husband on Netflix and it talks about this dancing cult. And it's a gentleman who in Los Angeles has started a church, but he's, he's, no one's allowed to come in or out. You're only, you're only invited. And then there are these like TikTok dancers that have gone viral. So he's making a lot of money off of them. But the one thing that really bothered me was he said in a sermon and it was recorded, said, you, that you need to distance yourself from your family so that they can get into heaven. Which doesn't make any sense, but what he's doing is scaring them into distancing themselves from their family because he knows what he's doing is a manipulation, spiritual, probably financial. Um, and, and if the family gets too involved, he, that's going to take away that person. So he's telling them, you can get your family into heaven if you believe in Jesus and you don't talk to your family. And people are actually being duped by it, you know, young people. So I want to get this out there. No one is going to make you do that. My relationship with Jesus and the fact that I believe in him does not extend to my family. They Each individual person needs to have a personal relationship with Jesus. It's not a grandfathering in. That is a personal relationship, an intimate relationship between you and Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. So I just want to encourage anybody, if you know anybody who's kind of getting sucked into something like that, pray over them and allow them to see like, no, this is not what Jesus would want. This is an This is not true. The things that he's speaking over you aren't correct. And ask them to pray for discernment. And and Jesus, God, they will show him or her, you know, the right path. So I really hope that um, this was encouraging for you guys. I want everyone to protect their peace, especially no matter what comes rolling down the hill, you know. I do believe, you know, Christians have been persecuted as well. We're not, we're not like there are many groups that are are persecuted for their beliefs and and Christians are not above that. And I, I, it does tell us in the Bible that we will be. So I want you to maintain your peace. I want you to maintain firm in your faith, no matter what happens, no matter what someone um, provides you with, you know, no matter what someone tests you with. Don't let it shake your faith in Jesus. He is a faithful God and he will reign victorious, you know, like at the same time, take joy in everything that's going on in the world. That means Jesus is coming back. I have warned you about these things so that you won't be shocked when they happen. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he's getting at. So when you see these things happening, it's like, whoa, he's coming back soon. So if you're lukewarm, get hot, get hot, turn your burner up (laughs) because he is coming and it's going to be such a fantastic day. So don't let anyone rob you of your eternity for the few years that you have in this crazy world and try to maintain that peace, that mercy, that love for everybody 
in the world regardless of what they do our battle is not against flesh and blood it is against the spiritual realm there is a war in the spiritual realm that we need to focus on not the people whatever is seen is temporary whatever is unseen is eternal focus on that i hope you have a great day i've got more coming at you Thank you so much for supporting me again, and I will see you next time on Confessions from a Pastor's Wife.